you, thank you, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for connecting wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining this broadcast from Biafra land, you are joining this broadcast from Europe, from America, from Australia, from Canada, from whichever part of the world you are joining the program, I appreciate you and I say, may Chukwukuka be my guide and protect you. I pray for everybody that is joining, mainly from Biafra land. If you are connecting from Biafra land, I say, may Chukwukuka be my continue to provide for you, continue to protect you, and continue to secure you. This is a very important broadcast. We have to encourage each other. We are in a very difficult time. And this time that we are in is a very challenging time, the time that every one of us have to wake up, do the right thing, pursue the course, and make sure that we succeed. If you have read the topic I wrote today, I am talking to the politicians and the Igbo elites this is the time to join Biafra. It is now or never. This is the time to declare for Biafra. It is now or never. If you do not want to join, it's left for you at your own risk. We are not begging, but this is the time. A lot of things have happened in the past. Every one of us saw it. And today, I am here to remind the politicians, the Ohanes and Dibu, more especially. I'm here to remind the Igbo elites, the Ohanes and Dibu, what they have said in the past. You know, for a very past, in the past, they have been blackmailing IPOB, blackmailing Mazin Nandekano, telling us all manner of lies, saying all manner of things that are irrelevant. But today, it is becoming much more clearer than ever. It is becoming much more clearer than ever. They said so many things in the past, and they think that we have forgotten. They said think that they, we have forgotten. They said a lot of things when they were talking about restructuring, they talked restructuring, that restructuring the only best way they can get it without getting it, they will blow to the election. All of a sudden, they stopped talking about restructuring. They begin to talk about 2020 election, and they are talking about evil presidency without evil president, they will not be president without evil president, we are going to join Biafra. They were saying that singing it in a song today. Where are we? Invite them. Share the video with all those people who call themselves elites, all those politicians. All those who call themselves politician in Poland, all those elites, share it with them. Ask them, where are we today? We are in 2022. For a very long time, they started from the restructuring. They blackmailed Mazin Nandekano with restructuring. All manner of language they used against Mazin Nandekano. They were telling Mazin Nandekano so many things, blackmailing Mazin Nandekano with restructuring. They blackmailed IPOB with restructuring. That they want restructuring. Even when they held meeting with Mazin Nandekano, they said they wanted restructuring. That without restructuring, nothing that will go for restructuring. Mazin Nandekano told them, go for restructuring. Go and get me restructuring. I am going to hold my self-determination. Mazin Nandekano told them, when you get the restructuring, we look into it. If it's okay, we will go with it. But I cannot leave what I'm doing when I don't have anything you are giving to me. Instead of them going to fight for restructuring, they came back and begin to invite the Python dance. They tried to kill Mazin Nandekano. The same thing this time around, they came for their Igbo presidency. The caliphate gave them the condition to stop Biafra. Instead of now going to pursue the right thing, now pursue that, even stand on that very restructuring, they told them to go and arrest Mazin Nandekan. They connived together, they went and kidnapped Mazin Nandekan all the way from Kenya and brought it to Nigeria, all in the name of Igbo presidency. And after that, the problem continues. They created so much insecurity in the Southeast. They created, they created their, their false flag operation in Biafra land. So many false flag operations in Biafra land to make to demonize the people, to demonize IPOB, to demonize the indigenous people, to demonize Mazin Nanikara, to demonize the ESN. Flag operation by the caliphate themselves. Flag operation by the government of Muhammad Buhari and their military. They cause all manner of trouble. They begin to kill people, begin to cause insecurity in Biafra land just to make sure they destroy their so-called Igbo president. And what did you see our Igbo president, uh, Igbo elites saying? Igbo elites kept silent. The politicians kept silent. All of them were saying they will want Igbo presidency. How do you get the Igbo presidency? That is no plan. And we were telling them that the caliphate will never ever allow any Igbo Biafra to become a president in that contraption. When we are saying it, they say it is propaganda. They say we don't know whether we are causing trouble. They say we are making noise. Today, it is now clearer than it was yesterday. It is much more clearer today than it was yesterday. Finally, the PDP, that every one of them have hoped on, P 
PDP that every one of them is capitalizing on, finally they have chosen another Fulani man, Achiko Abubakar, as their flag bearer. They have chosen another Fulani man. Today, I have come to remind the political elite in Biafra land, the Ohanese and Dibu, I have come to remind them everything they have said in the past. Today is a day to remind them. You see them boasting. Some of them say, if you don't give us Igbo president, you will have no option for Biafra. Well, today, it is time to start agitation. Let them come and lead the agitation. Let the Ohanese and Dibu and this political elite, this is the time for them to lead. It is for their own sake, oh. It is not even for, it is for their own life because the assassination of the political elite in Biafra land will start very soon. Their arrest and assassination is going to start. It's going to kick off. It is going to kick off. Finally, the Fulani Caliphate have unvi unveiled their new strategy for jihadists. They have brought out their new leader of their jihadi movement, Adikov Baka. Now, Go and check all those people who were shouting Igbo president, Igbo president, Igbo president to them. They have not gone on hiding. Let's see what they're going to do. But my purpose here today is to remind them every single thing they have said in the past. When you hear them talking, you think that this will be reasonable. I have never seen the kind of coward we have in Biafra land, the Igbo Biafrans, the political elite. The political elite in Igbo, Igbo land are the worst, the worst cowards we have. The worst coward you have in that caliphate, in that very contraption called Nigeria. In the contraption called Nigeria, the worst, the worst people you have, the worst politicians you have, the worst cowards you have, they are the evil politicians. It started from, 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 from restructuring. When they were shouting restructuring, restructuring, without restructuring, no election, without restructuring, no election, you thought they mean what they're saying. But Mazin Nandekano knows them very well. That is why my Nanikana doesn't listen to any politician. That is why we don't listen to them when they are talking about their political solution. We don't listen because we know it is all a lie. It is all a blackmail. It is all deception. It doesn't, there is no single truth in what they're saying. It is much more clearer today than it was yesterday. But still, you see some people, even some Biafras are pretending, pretending, pretending that they are looking for Igbo presidency. Today, it is much more clearer than it was yesterday. Even up to now, some of them are still pretending. Some of them are still pretending when they have seen that the two major parties, the two major parties in the country of Nigeria will never, ever choose an Igbo man to lead them. And there is nothing like thought force in Nigeria. When you talk about a thought force, it doesn't exist in Nigeria. Peter Obi already is gone. He's gone, completely gone. Anybody that's talking about him, you just want to warm your mouth. You just want to give yourself more time to cry. You just want to give yourself more time to cry or more time to lament. But the time is now. The time is now. Every single lie they have told, it has come to an end. As PDP have unveiled their new jihadists yesterday, at Ikobaka, it has ended. The dream of your president have ended. Now, we are going to see those who are coward. We are going to see those who are slave. We are going to see more of the slave, more of the coward, more of the deceivers. Let's see the kind of language they're going to use. The same thing they did when they were talking about it. So without restructuring, there will be no election. Without restructuring, there will be no election. All of a sudden, every single one of them is having a candidate in the election today. They're having a candidate. They, they change, they, they twist it and say, Igbo presidency, that it is their turn to have a presidency, that nobody should stand on their way, that IPOB is standing their way, Mazin Nandekano is standing their way. They went ahead to connive and kidnap Mazin Nandekano from Kenya and rendition him to Nigeria. Today, that evil presidency that we told them that they can never ever have, that the contraption called Nigeria is structured in a way that no Igbo Biafran will ever ever be a president. No Igbo Biafran will ever smell presidency. It will never happen. When we said it, they thought it was a joke. Today you have seen it play out. You have, they have seen it much more clear than it is today. I am here today to remind them. And I'm going to play so many videos today I'm going to play so many videos today to take your mind back to what has happened in the past. Just be patient. Be patient enough to follow so that you can understand what we are saying. You can understand everything that why the agitators are crying on their various platforms. Follow gradually so that you can understand why the Biafran people are sitting at home. Remember, tomorrow is sit at home. And I bet you, if you are sincerely a Biafran, if you genuinely want freedom, this is the time to... This is the time to activate the highest kind of seat at home that have never been seen before. A seat at home that have never been seen before. 
This is the time to activate it. Monday is coming. Monday is this is the time to activate it because you have seen it clearly that all hope, the only hope that remains now is Biafra. The only hope that remains for the indigenous people, not only for the Biafra, for the indigenous people, is Biafra. The only hope that is, remains now is Biafra. Before I continue, let us take it gradually. Be patient with me and follow me up to watch these videos I'm going to play. We are going to start from a video. The video, what the we are saying before we go to this place that we are today, what they were saying when they were preaching their evil presidency, saying all manner of things. And when they are talking, you think they mean what they're saying. I want you to hear the leader of the Ohanes and the president general of Ohanes and Dibu, George Opioso. I want you to hear what that clown was saying. Today, that time, the stage is right. Let us see what he's going to say. Watch and hear what Opioso is saying here. One voice. That is not a political now. One voice is dictatorial. One voice is unacceptable in a plural society, especially irrepressible pluralistic society like Nigeria. Certainly irrepressible individualists like Igbos. Now, my friend, what are Igbos bringing? In fact, they are bringing visible and conspicuous achievement, capacity to turn difficulties to turn this national difficulties into dividends for Nigeria, obstacles into opportunities. Let me tell you the truth. Nations are saved by two kinds of events, either through leadership or through structure, none of which has worked in Nigeria. The Igbo man can change it. He's not a greedy man. He is also not a lazy man. Forget every perception you may have about the Igbo. The Igbos know how to share things and let others begin to take. And he's willing to take the last. Just as we are taking the last of all the zones in Nigeria for presidents. Yeah. You will see a difference, my friend. The difference will be clear. The difference will be that the country will be stable because you are getting a government that will embrace justice, equity, and fairness. Charity to all and malice to us none. We are the federating people in Nigeria. Yes. If Nigerians live in the moon, the Igbo man is there. He is there. The truth of the matter is that you are just don't want to use their talent. But it is your own loss. Look at it. I went to South Korea in the, seven, in the 80s. South Korea was developed within 10 years. One of the, the advisors, economic advisors, the World Bank sent there was the Kali the Kakal. Go and ask. So, what are we talking about there? Uh, speaking with one voice. My friend, we will not speak with one voice. We are not Mumu. <laughs> Igbos will speak with different voices, reasonable different voices, then articulated by a leadership that has a sense of direction and knows what matters. Indeed, with this uh, question of one voice, look at where one voice has kept us. <laughs> no voice anymore. <laughs> Come on, my friend. Don't, don't provoke me with your voice. <laughs> you heard this man. This was when they were deceiving the Biafran people. You see him the way he was laughing, chatting, talking about Ibu man being a president. This was when they were deceiving every single Biafran. They were deceiving us, calling us all kind of names. Look at him the way he was boasting. That is, it, it is their turn to provide a president to make a change. Change in what? In where? What are you going to change? In which country? In where are you going to change? And he was preaching this message, shouting, and some people bought into it and they thought that they were talking to a human being. This man who said that we think that they are Mumu, today, haven't you seen their Mumu? Their Mumu is much more clearer today than ever. He said in that video that they think we are Mumu, that, that the Igbo elites are not Mumu. Today you have seen their Mumuism. Their Mumu is clear, clear more than everything. This was where he was boasting. And each time you see them, see they, they, they try to boast, they say Igbos are scattered everywhere in the north, in the north, they are living everywhere. Do you think that Igbo scattering everywhere is, a, is an achievement? Is that an achievement? Igbo people scattering everywhere, all over the world, scattered everywhere, is that an achievement? And every time you see them talking, they will begin to use that phrase. 
that Igbo are scattered everywhere. Igbo are scattered everywhere in every state. Everywhere you go, you see Igbo. Is that an achievement? Ask this for clowns. Is that an achievement? This was when they were deceiving us. When they were deceiving us, calling us name. When we tell them that the Igbo presidency can never ever happen, there is no a, there is no plan for that. And as long as Nigeria remains the way it is, you can never ever have any any president for the Igbo extraction. When we say it, they say we are making trouble. They call Mazin Nan the kind of matter of names. They demonize IPOB. They blackmail ESN. That was when that idiot was laughing and making that comment, boasting of Igbo president. Today, what is happening? What is happening? Where is Obi also today? Where is him? Can he also, can he, you, the only thing is that you cannot shame the shameless because they are all shameless. You can't shame the shameless. Will he still be bold enough to come and, sh and laugh the way he's laughing here? The way he was deceiving himself here. That is not, a, I'm going to play another video for you where you see one of the senators was saying that if they will not give them the Igbo president, there will be a breakup. I'm going to play another video. You watch, watch carefully. Every video I'm going to play for you, watch that video carefully and listen to what they are saying. Then you ask them, where are they today? We are going to be reminding them and throw the video to their face. If you know any one of them, throw the video to their face, let them watch and see what they have said in the past. The only option, just as Martin Nandekan kind of have said, the only option left for a Biafran is Biafra. There is nothing left for Biafra. Mainly the Igbo Biafra, the only option for them to survive and have a responsible living is Biafra and nothing else. And if you think it's a joke, continue to watch. Let us listen again on what they were saying. At a meeting in Enugu State, the Ohanese Indigo Worldwide says the time has come for the realization of the quest by Igbo to rule Nigeria. Speaking at the meeting, President General of Ohanese Indibu, Professor George Obiozo, says the National Executive Committee of the organization, which was inaugurated in January 2021, has failed to take off due to constraints such as insecurity, the agitation for power shift to Southeast in 2023, the sit-at-home order by the outlawed indigenous people of Biafra, and paucity of funds. Sit-at-home order. The Monday sit at home order is a, a problem for Nibu. It is strange for a group of a group to face the barrel of the gun inwards. Many people have estimated the good loss the service incurred on a weekly basis as a result of the sit at home order. He also describes the quest for an Igbo presidency in 2023 as morally and historically justifiable. Himself or herself. To this end, Ohanese Igbo has made contact with several Nigerian leaders with respect to the rights of Igbo of the Southeast to produce the president for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All the double dealings about zoning or not zoning, maneuvering or big maroling, about rotation of power, is simply orchestrated, uh, orchestrated to deprive the Southeast of the right to produce a president. A chieftain of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Victor Ume, says the Igbo presidency will promote equity and fairness in Nigerian politics. Funny. The Southwest has produced Abbasanjo for eight years. Uh, their son is vice president, serving out for eight years. And the election is coming up next year for presidential election. All of them are declaring. I think they're, they're, they're looking for breakup of Nigeria, uh, if I want to put it uh, uh, straightforward. Because if they want Nigeria to be united, they will not be seeking to occupy that office next year. The Igbo leaders are... Did you hear him? Did you hear Umedia? Did you hear him? That if they do not give them the Igbo president, that's the breakup of Nigeria. And you had the Ohanes and Igbo leader. The reason why they have been trying to destroy the seat at home, the reason why they have decided to form their unknown government to destroy the seat at home is because of this Igbo presidency. 
it is because of the evil president that the politicians have formed their different kinds of unknown government. It is the kind, because of the evil president that is why they have the flag operation, forced flag operation in Biafra land that is causing the insecurity. Every day you see them coming, everything, the thing that comes to their mouth is sit at home, sit at home. Because of this, they are so called evil president. That is why they do not want us to talk about the release of Mazen Nandikam. In extension, because of this very people president, that is why they went to Kenya to kidnap us in the Kano, and they will stop us from asking for his release through the sit at home on Monday. Because of that, that is why they are condemning the sit at home, because of this very, this very evil president that is dead, dead, completely dead now. That is completely dead now. Now it has become very clear to them. Are they going to stop us again? Any Biafra that does not participate on the Monday sit at home, tomorrow i know that you are from the pit of hell you don't need to force anybody we don't need to enforce it it is high time that every biafra open their eyes wide and see clearer you can't tell me that anybody is deceiving you this time nobody is deceiving anybody if you tell me you don't know what to do you don't know the right thing it means you are a clown you are you don't deserve to leave you don't deserve to leave the only reason these people have been condemning the Monday sit at home for the place of Mazen and the Kano is because of this, their so-called Igbo president have, that is completely dead. Finally, the full and the have chosen another jihadist to continue the agenda. And all of them have gone into their shelf. You heard what they were saying. You heard Victor Media, a senator, saying that if they do not give them Igbo presidency, that means they won't break up. The time is now. Let them come and lead the struggle. Let them start the campaign from every of their section, any place they are. Let them start a campaign. Let them now begin to raise the issue of referendum from Senate to House of Assembly. Let them stand up in the House of Assembly and talk about the referendum of the people. Self-determination is the ultimate. After all, there is a case of self-determination that is going to be had in the court on, the, on, on October. Let them pursue that. If they are sincere, let them pursue the case of self-determination that is in court. Support those lawyers and give them more able lawyers to pursue the self-determination. It is time. It is now Biafra or never. It is now Biafra or nothing. We cannot settle for anything. You see the people. You see their deceit. These two videos I have played them. When you see them talking, you think they have a plan. When you see them talking about Igbo president, you think they have a plan. They don't have any plan. No plan. No, nothing at all. Mazen Nandekan was the only man that gave them that courage. Was the only one that gave them the power that was able to give them the stance on where to get that evil president if they sincerely wanted it. How I wish these people were speaking openly, standing shoulder to shoulder with the Mazen Nandekano. If these politicians and these 100 people were standing with the Mazen Nandekano, shoulder to shoulder, supporting IPOB openly, let me tell you, the caliphate, we call them, that people, the people in that contraption corner, we call them to come and take the president, they will not be for it. How I wish every single one of them today Every single one of them that is crying today, crying in PDP, you see a grandmother crying. You see, you see a grandmother crying. You see, you see, you see, you see a grandmother crying. You see a uh, 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 crying the other way. You see uh, uh, what the Gorocha Sokorocha in prison. You see, you see, you see uh, uh, Ojusokar. If all these people were supporting IPOB plainly, openly, the way Muhammad Buhari was supporting Boko Haram, Muhammad Buhari was supporting Boko Haram. Boko Haram, that is a terrorist organization, Muhammad Buhari was supporting them. Even they chose him as a spokesperson. And yet, they gave him presidency. If these people were serious, it's only Mazen Nandekano that gave them a platform for presidency in a platter of gold. Mazen Nandekano gave them a platform pre for presidency in a platter of gold. Support him openly. Come out openly. Your brother is asking for self determination Mazen Nandekano is not a terrorist. IPOB is not a terrorist. They are not terrorists. They are not killing anybody. They are not taking any arms for anybody. They have not taken any Support them openly. You didn't support them. Instead, you went and proscribed them. Instead, you went and began to demonize them. You went and created different kinds of flag operation against them. You went and created unknown government to fight against your youth that is going to stand for you. The people that gave you a platform to have the confidence and talk about evil presidency, you destroy them. And today, here are we. Here are we. Who are you going to blame again? What excuse again do you have? When you see them talking in those, those videos, you think that this will have something over here. Now, I am going to show you the move they made. I am going to play another video. List every video I play here. Listen carefully from video. Pay attention to every video I play. Pay very close attention to every video I play. This video I'm going to play now, 
I will it will show you the kind of arrangement they went they made in the north, the kind of move they made, and the answer they got. I am going to play for you. Watch this video. I'm going to play for you now. Watch and listen to everything this idiot, this idiot that went to disgrace the Igbos. To disgrace the Igbos. You I will, there's an idiot that went to the north to disgrace Igbos, to demonize Martin and they can demonize the IPOB and call us all different kinds of names and to deny Biafra, all in the name of getting Igbo presidency. All in the name of getting Igbo president. And today, here I will, I'm going to play the video for you. Let you see. That's what the kind of plan they had. When you see them shouting and talking, you see that will be also vomiting speed in his mouth. You think that he knows what he's saying. They have no plan and no idea whatsoever. The only single legitimate plan they, that they were supposed to have was Mazen Nandekano. Support the struggle of Biafra. Support IPOB and everything will be possible for you. They refuse. Today, IPOB, Biafra has become the only option. Self-determination and referendum. No going back. Watch this video and see how far and what they did. The North, with the population and the uh, vast uh, uh, majority place, that the North uh, will always play the role of a kingmaker in deciding, uh, being a deciding factor in 2023 presidency. And we feel that uh, the best thing we should do is to uh, migrate from the other side of the of the world to come to this place and uh, interface with the real people who are the people that are holding the masses, rather than uh, abusive works in tatrums in the in the dollars that we decided to extend the hand of friendship uh, to the north having said that um, we ask one question ourselves what's happened to the relationship between namda zikiwe and tafala belewa what's happened to the existing relationship between the north and the east where did he, we got it wrong what happened what transpired is it because that um, one person somewhere decided to uh, paint Igbos as if we are Biafras? No, we believe in one Nigeria. The vast majority population of Igbos are residing in 19 Northern states. With the highest investments we have in 19 Northern, we have about, about 2.3 trillion worth of investment Igbos that have been invested in Northern Nigeria. And by so doing, we say no. That the best thing we have to do is to ensure that we reach out with the fulcrum of the society, the people uh, general, Yerima uh, Shetima, um, to dialogue on the way forward regards to 2023. And moreover, you have heard, or it's not a new uh, agenda, that this is the turn of the Igbo people. And uh, irrespective that our friend here, who have been having another uh, diverse opinion that the North must restrain power uh, after President Muhammad Buhari, we say no. It's not something that will come and fight in the delays or every time we'll be, you know, countering what he says. No, let us come and have a persuasive dialogue. And by, this, by so doing, we are looking at how do we get here in this mess today in Nigeria? Nigeria has been ravaged by insecurity in the north. It's been extended to the south. In the southeast now, there is no... Today is Monday. The, the economy is crashing. Somebody somewhere is to sit at home, not in Nigeria, and everything is going wrong. What we need is somebody who is of age. We are looking at age. Somebody who can unite Nigeria as Nigerians to be one. And that is why we are here to say that we believe in one Nigeria, and also we are ensuring that we are persuading our brothers to support us. We have had it. We are not expecting any response from them now. Let them go and think about it. That the best thing they have to do is to look at um, competency in 2023. And when you talk of competency, you uh, we Ipos have abundance of uh, material resources that can succeed President Muhammad Buhari. Is it? In terms of competence, you talk about our son from River State, um, the Minister for Transport, Chibika Meichi, who we are preparing to declare very soon. You talk about the versatility and acceptance in the North. You talk about Senator uh, Richard Sokoracha, who, uh, who was even born like Nanda Zikwe was born in the North. You talk about international diplomacy. We have uh, our Minister for Foreign Affairs, um, Geoffrey Onyama, who has helped President Muhammad to launder the image of Nigeria. When you talk about infrastructure development and uh, this, you talk about the governor of uh, Ebony State, um, Governor Dave Umay. You see, I talk about the managerial skills. You talk about our, our brother, former governor of Anambra State, uh, Mr. Pito B. We have abundance. We have people who are ready, are committed to serve Nigeria. And what we are begging the North is to come 
and look at not the region but look at the quality of candidates people who are ready to serve nigeria people who are ready to continue to salvage the image of nigeria beyond the way we have descended so low and so uh, you know into the abyss of violence abyss of insecurity poverty and all the rest of it so we are uh, uh, begging the north that they should look at the individuals not at the region because looking at the region will, will be misunderstood now you have heard this clown you see what this clown was saying everything that this clown was saying was just rubbish rub nonsense look at how sh shameless they are this is somebody who has gone to not in the name of the Igbo people a clown a complete clown first of all he went there and he denied biafra he denied Biafra even when he knew that 99.9% .9 of the Igbo people are Biafrans. He denied Biafra. He went there and denied Biafra. And look at him when he was talking. Everything he's talking there is absolutely nonsense and nothing was wrong. And even after making begging, after begging and begging, he was still begging his master. He was begging his master not to reply now. He should go and think about it. And of course, they never replied. And the reply is what you are seeing today. After saying all that rubbish he has said, Trying to demonize everybody, calling Mazen and the Kamuni man, saying all manner of trash, talking all manner of rubbish. He didn't make any sense, and he begged them not to reply. And today, you have seen the reply. And when he went there, he was calling people they were trying to who contest. Look at every single person he mentioned his name there as people they have. Where are they today? Every single person he mentioned his name there. Where are they today? Where is Peter be today? Where is Peter be today? Where is Richard Sokratia today? He mentioned uh, uh, Amechi. Rotimi Amechi is not from the Southeast, even though he's an Igbo man. He's not from the Southeast. But if you sincerely want to choose an Igbo presidency, it has to be from the Southeast. Not from the extended part. It has to be from the Southeast. They are talking about Southeast president, not actually from generally from Igbo people. But because they wanted to create that loophole where they will use somebody who will serve them. That idiot mentioned Amechi. We are not denying Amechi that Amechi is an Igbo man. Amechi is an Igbo man, a core Igbo man. But he is from the south side. He was coming into the south side. The caliphate coming into the south side. But at this time that we are in, it is the south east that are supposed to provide the presidency. But all those people he mentioned their name, where are they today? Dave Umahi that he called them and Amishi. You and I know that APC will never give them their ticket. Which other person he called the name there? Rocha Sokrocha today is in the in the EFCC. Talk about the P2B. P2B today have, have, been, have disappeared from PDP. And there is no hope where he's going. Nigeria doesn't have anything like top force. If you are not in APC or PDP, you can never, you can never win anything. You will not. These are the only two parties. You, can, you cannot win anything. And this is the strategy and the plan. This was the kind of betrayal this, this the Johannes and Nibu did. When you saw Hope or, or, or George Obioso speaking, when he was speaking and laughing, you think he has any plan. This is the kind of plan he has. To go to the north, to degrade us, to go to the north, to beg, to beg. After begging, he denied Biafra. Begging and denying Biafra. Talking down on Biafra people, insulting Biafra people. And at the end of the day, even begging them not to respond, they should respond on their own time. And you heard that idiot talking about the relationship we have with Tafa Belewa. Which relation do we have with Tafa Belewa? What relation? What stupid relationship we have with Tafa Belawa? What relationship? What stupid relationship? Relationship that have kept us in slavery that we are in today. What relationship are you having with Tafa Belawa? When you heard Amadou Bello, when Amadou Bello was talking against the Igbo people, when Amadou Bello was interviewed by the BBC, you heard what Amadou Bello said about the Igbo people. And that is the plan of the North. The Northernization agenda. The Northernization agenda is against the Igbo Biafrans. In case you don't know about your forgotten, I'm going to play the video for you, for you to see what the idiot Amadou Bello said about Ibu Biafra. And this idiot has forgotten it. He's talking about our relationship with North. What relation did the Biafra have with North? What fake relationship? What stupid relationship would you have with them? What this video? This is the kind of relationship that idiot. One thing I've noticed, Premier, while I've been here, is that Northerners seem to have, I might almost call it, obsession about the Ebos. Could you perhaps explain that to me? Well, the Igbos are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, 
to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. If you put them in a labor camp as a laborer, within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp, and so on. Well, in, in the past, our people were not alive to their responsibilities, because you can see from our northernization policy that in 1952, when I came here, there weren't ten northerners in our civil service here. Then I tried to have it northernized, and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners. Is this policy of filling all key posts in the north solely with northerners and not with other Nigerians a temporary or permanent one? In actual fact, what it is, is a northerner first. If you can't get a northerner, then we take an expatriate like yourself on contract. If we can't, then we can employ another Nigerian, but on contract too. This is going to be permanent, I should say, for the, as far as I can foresee, because it would be rather dangerous to see the number of boys we are now turning from our, all our learning institutions coming out with having no, no work to do. I'm sure whichever government of the day might be, it will feel rather embarrassed, and it might even lead to bloodshed. Doesn't this damage the idea, sir, of uh, all people in all regions in, in Nigeria being fellow citizens of one country? Well, it might, but uh, um, you are, I mean, new to our region, but how many northerners are employed in the east or in the west? The answer is no. And if there are, there may be ten laborers employed only in the two regions. What Bello said was mostly true. Did you hear him? This is the kind of relationship that that idiot that went to North is talking about. That is the kind of relationship he boasts. That what happened to the relationship we have with North. This is the kind of relation that you idiot is talking to. Relationship that these people hate us to the extent that they hate us because of our hard work. They hate Igbos because they are educated. They hate the Igbo beer fans because they are hardworking. Because when they press them down, they cannot stay down. That is the kind of relationship that we have with them. And that is what that idiot went on not to promote, talking about the relationship between Igbos and the North. Which, which stupid relationship do we have with them? Which stupid relationship? When a QMA was serving as a vice president to, 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 to Shagari, when they saw that a QMA was the person that was supposed to become the president after Shagari, what did they do? They planned overthrow. This same Muhammad Buhari, let Muhammad Buhari, let Muhammad Buhari overthrow Shagari so that a QMA cannot come out as a president. Let Muhammad Buhari overthrow Shagari so that the Kueme cannot come and contest as a president. And after overthrowing Shagari, they took a Kueme and threw him into Krikri and put Shagari in a, in a house arrest. Shagari, who was the president, was overthrown and they put him in house arrest. And the vice president, who has no single corruption in him, they put him in Krikri. They put him in Krikri. This is the kind of relationship we have. Even then, this same PDP we are talking about today, it was a QMA, where QMA is, one, is the founder of this EP, PDP. A QMA founded PP and PDP and sacrificed his leadership in PDP, sacrificed his put and gave to, 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 to our brothers in the Southwest so that they can be able to compensate them for the death of Abiola. A QMA sacrificed his position. A QMA was supposed to come out as a presidential candidate in PDP. But the Kweme left it for Abiola, for, for, for what, do call, uh, what do they call him, Obasanjo. A Kweme sacrificed his position for Obasanjo to compensate them for Abiola. All these sacrifices they were making. This is the kind of relationship we have with these idiots. A horse and a rider. A horse and a rider. And our father, Pahaya Dobenjo, described it very clear to us. That what you are seeing in Nigeria is a horse and a rider relationship, a horse and a rider marriage. Every other indigenous tribe is a horse while they are riding on our back. And you see Amadou Bello confirm it. Amadou Bello puts the foreigners, they put the white people first, even before every other indigenous tribe. You saw Amadou Bello speaking. Amadou Bello said that before they can be able to take anybody that is indigenous in Nigeria, they will look for an expatriate from abroad. If they cannot see an expatriate from abroad, then they cannot take any person from Nigeria and put him, but it will be on contract. And that is what you see playing out in the government of Nigeria today. Modernization. Fulanization. That is what is playing out today. And you see all these politicians who claim to have knowledge, who claim to know everything. They are blind and they cannot see. All these politicians that claim to know everything, they don't see. They are all blind. They are blind. They can't see. 
And to go for that, you see that idiot that went to North to talk all those rubbish. Then I'm going to play for you to show you the reply they gave him. Are yet to wake up from your slumber or your sleep and get the point that we are exiting Nigeria. Exiting Nigeria is not going to come from the platter of Godi plate. You have to sacrifice for it. And we are ready to sacrifice everything, including you. If you come and stand in the way of freedom. So you need to know how serious we are. We are damn serious. Some of you are not getting it. You think we are here to, to make to build political movement? We are here for freedom. Freedom come with price. Okay? The only thing you can do is to comment on social media. Don't ever stand on the way of Biafra freedom. We crush you. Their interest is suppressed. Biafra is the key. Once they can hold Biafra down, they can hold all of Africa down. <laughs> Hey, hey, freedom fighting, sorry. Because all these people are criminals, they are saying there is no way this man cannot be a criminal like themselves. They don't have a different breed altogether. They don't know that. I am a Nam Kano. I don't do all this nonsense you do. My father was a very rich man, not ostentatious. I had the finest education that his money could afford. We are not poor. Have never been. That is why a poor man cannot be a freedom fighter. If you are not full of yourself, you cannot be a freedom fighter. <laughs> you go everywhere. We must continue.